Hello again, Casa friends. Miss Mia here. Hello. And guess what? It's nighttime. Whoa. I wonder if there is a full whole moon, a half moon, a quarter moon tonight. I'm not sure because I haven't had the chance to go outside and check. But what I do know is all of this talk about wholes and halves and quarters is making me think about fractions. And as luck would have it, I am here tonight to give you a lesson on fractions. Now, Miss Zoe has already done a video lesson on fractions. And if you haven't watched that lesson introducing fractions yet, then please go back and watch that before you watch this lesson, because this lesson is the next step where we learn to write fractions. So let's remind ourselves about fractions. A fraction is a portion or a smaller part of something. And that something is a complete something called a whole. When we're talking about numbers, fractions are numbers that are less than one. And we are going to learn to write those numeral fractions today. These are the fraction insets or we also call them the fraction circles. And you probably remember them from the shelf in CASA 1 and CASA 2. Each of these fraction circles are the same size and shape of circle, but they have been divided into different quantities of parts. So as it turns out, the first of our circles is the only one that actually isn't a fraction at all. Why isn't this a fraction? Because it hasn't been divided into any parts. It's just like that pizza that Ms. Zoe started off with that hadn't yet been cut up into slices. So since this is a circle that is complete and hasn't been divided into any parts, we call this circle one whole. This is one whole. And how do you write one whole? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, just a one. One whole. Now we take the same circle, you see, they're the same, and we divide it into two equal parts. This is the whole circle, and now each of these is called a part of that circle. In our first fraction circle, the whole has been divided into two equal parts, and each of these parts is called one half. This is one half. This says one half. This is how you write a fraction. The number on the bottom of this fraction is called the denominator and it tells you the total number of parts that the whole has been divided into. So there is a two there because this circle has been divided into two parts. So the denominator is two. The number on the top of the fraction is called the numerator, and it is the number of parts that we are seeing, using, or considering. So right now, we're just looking at one of the halves. One of the halves. One of the two parts that this fraction has been divided into equally. So again, this is one half, this says one half. Two halves make one whole. Let's look at our next fraction inset. Can you see how many equal parts this fraction circle has been divided into? Let's count one, two, three. 
when you have a whole that has been divided into three equal parts, each of those parts is called one third. This is one third. This says one third. We have a three as the denominator because this is a fraction that has one, two, three equal parts. We, has a, we have a, a one as the numerator because we are only looking at one of those three parts right now, one third. Let's add another third. Now we have two, one, two, two thirds. Let's add the last third. Now we have three thirds. But what do you notice here? Do you notice that the numerator and the denominator are actually now the same and that we have used all three of the equal parts of the fraction and put them back together, thus creating one whole so actually, instead of writing three thirds, when you have put all the equal parts of a fraction back together to make the complete whole again, it just becomes one again, one whole. So three thirds is equal to one whole. Three thirds is equal to one whole. Let's put our thirds away and move on to our next fraction and set. How many equal parts has our next fraction circle been divided into? Let's count. One, two, three, four. Four equal parts. So automatically, we know that our denominator will be four. When you have a fraction divided into four equal parts, each of those parts is called one-fourth. This is one-fourth, this says one-fourth. Or another way of saying one-fourth is one-quarter. This is one-quarter, this says one-quarter. Two quarters. Let's change the numerator. three quarters. Let's change the numerator again, but the denominator stays the same. Four quarters. But now that all of the four equal parts are back together, we know that this is now actually one whole. All right, let's put our quarters away. How many parts do you see in our next circle fraction? One, two, three, four, five. That's right. So what numeral is going to be our denominator? If you said five, you are correct. Is that backwards? Yes, Sorry, I'm writing upside down. That's what happens when Miss Mia writes upside down. So the denominator is five because this fraction circle has been divided into five equal parts. And we call each of these equal parts one fifth. Two fifths. Three fifths. Four fifths, and finally, five fifths, which is actually the same as one whole. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, one whole.